Adrian. And congratulations, Keith and Graham. Beautiful to hear your co-created speeches and feel very moved by that. Feels um, we are working with, the, with time constraints and all those constraints, but it feels hard not to savor each award and to have to move on quite quickly and not have just real moments to stop and take it in because each person has contributed so much and so many hours and hours and a lifetime of writing and thinking and being and the courage to be oneself. And then we just move on so quickly. So I just wanted to pause for a moment. And also actually, you know, when you bring in the, the elders and the, the Maori um, tradition, um, Keith, um, I'd also like to honor our collective leader, you know, Patricia Clarkson, and remember her. Um, yeah. But now turning to my task for now, since I haven't done so well, my track record's not so great tonight. Um, <laughs> um, tonight I have the great privilege, um, and I mean that, a great privilege, um, to introduce uh, the, uh, to introduce Leonard Campos, who is this year's um, winner uh, of the Mary and Bob Goulding Social Justice Award. Um, when reading through the nomination and um, the various uh, contributions, Leonard himself wrote in his supporting uh, story uh, that he included in the nomination, he wrote, I am living out a script that calls for helping out the disadvantaged in society, where deep down in the little kid in me feels pain and empathy for them. No doubt this is related to the injustices I experienced as a child. Leonard, when reading your story, my heart ached for that little boy in you. And at the very same time, it leapt with joy and deep inspirational respect for your resilience and determination to be consistently active and walk the talk of giving a voice to so many who do not have the privilege of having one. Being a member of ITAA for me personally feels quite synonymous with meeting you at so many conferences where so often you called us, the TA community, to be socially active and to walk the talk of our philosophy and our history. What I am left with after reading your story is that after all these years, I actually realize I never knew you, the man, and your incredible narrative. It is a real confrontation for me when I think of how many of us meet year after year after year, but do we really in fact know each other? Our stories are so important to each other. They are so important to be heard because each time we hear our stories, they live. And through these stories, there is always a possibility for change. Your nomination party, Felipe Garcia, Janice Dawson, and Diane Mackey wrote beautiful, beautiful tributes to you. And tonight, we are gathered here to truly recognize you, your story, and how you have walked your talk and have used transactional analysis in the most profound ways which is to empower people to know that they too can make a difference and that change is truly possible. I salute you, the man, and all your actions. Even today, in your glorious aging years, you continue your work by giving a voice to the elderly community, which is another demographic that is so often silenced and forgotten. To our community, let's appreciate 
and applaud this hero of our community who has carried us all even when we did not even know that we were being carried. I sincerely hope that we will carry you, Leonard, with us and in being and in doing this we will be socially conscious in every possible waking moment. In this way, we thank you for your legacy. Congratulations, Leonard, on receiving this year's well-deserved 2020 Golding Social Justice Award. And in receiving this, we of course also remember Bob and Mary Golding for their incredible work that they did. Congratulations. Wonderful. Leonard, um, we are very honoured. You're one of the important elders of our community and we'd love to hear from you. Would you like to say something, Leonard? Am I on? I can't see myself. Yeah, we can see you. And you are on. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. All right. Thank you, Adrian. Hi, Fanita. Hi, Lena. Nice to see you, Fanita. Anyway, uh, I have a reputation of being a troublemaker, so here comes trouble. <laughs> and uh, to remind you all that remember TA is a branch of social psychology uh, and uh, uh, respectfully speaking, uh, we need to connect to our colleagues in the field of psychology. Anyway, in accepting this award, I want to thank Lucy Friedman who originally suggested I be nominated and to a whole host of people, uh, I will have to be forgiven if I forget you, but there's so many people that have supported me in my work. Uh, Felipe Garcia, Janice Dawson, Diane Mackie Sethi uh, on the nominating committee. Um, and so with humility, I want to say I share this as a gift from my peers. Uh, and there are so many of you. Uh, this is a time, of course, of the pandemic. But remember, we are also in a pandemic of social injustice globally. Uh, and it's like a virus also, which has to be confronted. So um, I want to uh, share it with people who truly deserve it, the people who are on the front lines, uh, in war zones, uh, helping out refugees, immigrant children. Um, they truly deserve this award. Uh, and I thank Robin uh, Fryer and um, Bill Cornell for their editorial support of my work. But there are so many that come to mind affectionately. Denton Roberts, Claude Steiner, George Kohlreiser, Pearl Jago, Valerie Batts, Muriel James, Marco Mazzetti, Madada Rotledge, John Bunks Monksville, Abe Wagner, Phyllis Jenkins, Rosemary Knapper, Elena Lee, Diane Salters, and you know, Diane is spearheading uh, a new committee on social engagement for the ITAA. I met uh, Bob and Mary Goulding through Paul McCormick, who gave a 101, TA 101 class at an institution for delinquent boys, and uh, was introduced to redecision therapy. Uh, and this was a product of integrating Gestalt therapy with TA uh, with the requirement that uh, 
it be validated through behavioral change. So it was truly an integrated uh, system uh, for change. And it had a lot of synergistic power for helping people change. Certainly, it certainly helped me change quite a bit. Uh, but before I became a redecision therapist, I was a psychologist working for the very same goals that I'm working for in TA. Uh, so many organizations are working in parallel without creating bridges to one another. Uh, my local psychologist organization has the same aspirations to confront social injustices just as we are doing. And I'm hoping that we'll create bridges, lots of bridges uh, with other groups uh, so that we're not just simply talking among ourselves, but we're talking across the bridge to psychologists, social workers, psychiatrists, educators, and religious leaders who also share our values. Um, Bob and Mary believe that talk is too cheap and that you have to take action. And when you train people, you must demonstrate how people change. Uh, they were like Eric Byrne. Uh, they were very impatient with words, especially big words. And he wanted to simplify this for the general public. It was supposed to have been a social psychology for the public, for the general public. Uh, so again, uh, I support all of you who are doing uh, just fine work. Um, here in America, you probably know about uh, uh, problems with uh, uh, police. Uh, I have, I have uh, uh, marched on the state capitol uh, against the police brutality, uh, against the black people. Uh, you, you've heard of the unjust way, unjust way that uh, immigrants are being treated and I have marched uh, against the uh, Immigration and Enforcement uh, Group, ICE, uh, who unjustly are detaining uh, families and their children in detention centers. Uh, that kind of direct action is what Bob and Mary call for. And I will still be engaged in that. And I'm, I have full support for Diane and her committee on social engagement. Um, one thing I discovered was that in my work with clients and with groups, that the process of redecision therapy empowered people. So I felt that empowerment was foundational to redecision therapy. <laughs> Uh, helping people to become strong, have the strength and the resilience to risk change. Uh, change is very scary for lots and lots of people. Um, so I uh, went around the world uh, doing empowerment workshops, going down to South America, uh, especially in Venezuela. Uh, I introduced uh, the redecision therapy empowerment tools to um, Umberto Blanco, Cesar Sanchez, Nelson Villoria, uh, and I also introduced it in Taipei, in Taiwan, uh, to the TA Alumni Association. Um, I've always been interested also in cultural competence and building bridges with different groups uh, so that uh, we are multicultural in our orientation. And I've spent a lot of my time promoting multiculturalism uh, in this country. And I encourage you to continue mm -hmm. doing that in your country also. Um, 
at the uh, Montreal Conference in 2010, uh, I helped to organize a worldwide network of transactional analysts for social responsibility. And we had a network for about three years where all over the globe people uh, presented their work. Uh, and uh, since uh, I couldn't get enough leadership for that, we moved it over to the script so that we'd have a feature on social responsibility in the script. Um, it was, um, let's see, uh, John Monk Steele organized, I organized a committee, a panel for the Bilbao conference. Uh, I couldn't attend because of family business in Paris. Uh, but he was the uh, moderator and uh, we had support from uh, Keith Tudor, uh, Vladimir Gusakovsky, Marco Mazzetti, and Eva Sylvie Rossi. Uh, lately, my attention has turned to Peace Action, uh, where I'm now uh, active in the anti-war uh, movement here in America, the D demilitarization movement. And I encourage you all to join me in demilitarizing these all, almost every country on this globe. Um, I wrote a, an article on how America is scripted for endless wars, going all the way back to George Washington, who said that the only way to keep peace is to be prepared for enemies. Uh, wrong script. Wrong script. Uh, we have to change our script for endless wars. And that's where I'm being active uh, today. Uh, so I may have gone beyond my time. But I, I, uh, I hope uh, that you too can be uh, join all the troublemakers. Uh, John Lewis, that dear man, a representative in the US Congress, uh, believed in good trouble. So I invite you all to engage in good trouble, uh, no matter uh, whether it, in, it involved getting arrested, uh, that's okay. Uh, so uh, I want to, enforce again uh, the ITAA goals uh, for social justice and encourage you all to get out there and fight. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a, it's quite a struggle. Uh, uh, nowadays, everything is overwhelming. When you look at all the injustices. Uh, so uh, take action. Uh, but with social responsibility. So anyway, I don't really have to say that to you. I know all of you have those values. So thank you very, very much uh, for this award. It's a personal milestone for me. Uh, and uh, I'm Latino and I feel such love for so many of you. And so I'm still gonna say, I love you all and keep up the good fight. Thank you again for this award. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Leonardo. Wow. Well, I think uh, I think that, you know, when we get a call to join the troublemakers and to make sure that the principles of TA are aligned with social justice and really being aligned to social responsibility. I think we need people like Leonard to say, go out there and do it. So thank you, Leonard. That was inspiring, really inspiring. Thank you so much and we honor you. Thank you.